Hi, welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Santonetti. And uh, we're here today, of course, to bring you the Word of God. Yeah, the B-I-B-L-E is still the book for me. I've read many things, have a lot of books, great library. But out of all the, I would say thousands of books that I have, the Bible still is the book of all books. If you took a, all the books of the world and you made it a step ladder, and you put the Bible as the first, when you got to the end of the step ladder, you will find the Bible at the last. Because Christ is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega, and His Word reveals to us His purpose. Well, this is part three of time. We spoke a little bit about how much time do you have? And we went on to, you know, to talk about why time is important for us. But today I want to talk about, I want to talk about the significance of time, the significance of time. <laughs> you know, recently I heard a person um, trying to explain the significance of time when they were asked, what is the significance of time? And they really couldn't answer it because, or the person couldn't answer it because they have no idea of it. The significance of time doesn't really mean anything about culture or who we are. It's all about God. Now, significance simply means of great importance. I mean, if that person would have known that, they would have talked about the great importance of all that exists today. But it also expresses something beyond the external mark. In other words, when you look at the word significance, it's beyond us. We're at a place in life that we are doing, we're functioning, but when God gives you significance, in your time, it is talking about something further than where you are. It has an external mark. It expresses the sense of something to look forward to. Think about that. It, is, and it stands as a sign of something that we are to reach toward. So what is the significance of time when it comes to God? Because God expresses to us everything that he wants us to do. For example, the Passover of the Jews is significant because they escaped from the destruction of the Egyptians. So there was significance there of great importance, but then God had a time. Now, the concept of significance also works with time. It brings forth many things. For example, we see the time of the beginning of the creation. The Bible tells us in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, think about this now. I say think about it a lot because it's important to think about it. The very beginning is time. Before God created the heavens and the earth, He brought the significance of time into view. Why? Because God is the one that created everything after the word beginning. In the beginning, which is God, the principal corner of all of creation and all things, He put time before all things. Why? Because the earth and the heavens were supposed to have an eternal time, but because of the fall of Adam, that cease. And now the earth and the heavens will be destroyed in the end, and God will give us a new one that will not end. But yet God chose to put time before us to show us the significance of his work and the power that it took to create it. Why? Because he integrated his will into our lives with a sense of timing. If, if you sit at home thinking that you can just kill time, I have news for you. You are not killing time. Time is killing you. The moment that God breathed into Adam, he breathed into that body, his breath, 
and Adam became a living soul and he knew the purpose of his role because God gave it to him. It was so important that the, the significance or the importance of that role was to care for God's creation. And God did a marvelous thing by giving us the essence of time and the significance of that time in his will. So when you think about where you are right now, when you think about right now, just think about where am I in life right now? Is it significance or significant or is it insignificant? Insif insignificant means that it doesn't have any value. You're having a conversation with someone, they go, well, that's really insignificant right now. In other words, it's useless. So God placed in Adam a breath. Listen now. He placed in him a breath, which is Adam himself. We are spirit and spirit cannot die. But can the role of God and the purpose of God be dead in our lives? Absolutely. Now think about this for a moment. Watch time. Time and the significance of rhythm. In other words, we speak in time, we blink in time, we talk in time, right? We think in time, we breathe in time, we walk in time, we hear in time. In other words, rhythm itself is time. And so as we walk according to God's will, are we walking according to his rhythm? Everything around us is rhythm. As a matter of fact, the first thing to happen in the fetus of a mother's womb is a heartbeat. They say it's about 18 days when the seed is conceived into the womb of a mother, the heart begins to beat. Some people don't even, some women don't even know that they're pregnant at 18 days. But yet, the fetus is already beating time. So now, think about this for a second. Take a conductor. You know, the conductor writes a piece of music for the orchestra and chooses the time it will be in rhythm. And all the musicians that are under the conductor have their score. But the most important part of the score is the conductor. Why? Because the conductor holds the baton in the hand. And you see them moving the baton. And that baton is marking out time for the musicians to follow. So God has already given us his baton in his word. His word reveals his will. And when we come in line with the will of God, we become significant to the kingdom of God. Now, everything in the world has what is called an algorithm. You want to look that word up? It's a beautiful word and it's good to study. Algorithm basically means a plan or the movement or the the, the calculation of what you do. In other words, there's a formula for you to cook a cake. There's a formula to building a building, etc. All of it works in algorithms. And do you know that algorithm is all about life? So if we get rid of the significance of God's will in our life, we will miss life in a horrible way. It is important for us to continue the journey of the way of God and not miss the point because we were birthed with significance. We are important because God has given us the point of his will. He points his finger, tells us, go this way. The scriptures is the finger of God. You hear me? The Bible tells us that when God wrote the scriptures, he wrote it with his finger. It was so significant in the time of Jesus that when it came to pointing out to the people what he was doing, they actually accused him, saying that he was casting out demons by an evil spirit, Beelzebub. 
And you know what he said? If I cast out demons by the finger of God, in other words, he was speaking the word of God in his time, and everything he said was significant to that moment. In other words, the algorithms were working in that moment, and spirits were cast out, people were healed. Everything that he did was in the significance of time of God. Everything that we do in life has to deal with proper timing. Abraham was called out of Babylonia at the proper time. Ezekiel, uh, excuse me, Isaiah was born at the proper time. Jacob was born at the proper time. Israel was born at the proper time. And every one of them has special purpose. And the time that they lived in was significant to the call of their life. So in other words, time will tell. Everything that you do, time will tell tell. There's no way that you can get away from time. You know, when people say time is moving, oh yeah, it is moving and we need to do something with that time. I want to introduce you to someone you already know in the Bible and I want to use him as an example. Ezekiel, the prophet Ezekiel. Now, let me read the first three verses from the first chapter. Now it came to pass in the 30th year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Babylon, or Kelber, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, the word of the Lord came expressively unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river of Babylon. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Wow. Wow. Before you can do anything for God, you need to sit with God so that he can show you everything he wants you to do. You see this chapter right here, the first chapter, it talks about containing the vision of God, which was introduced to the prophet's call and the commission for him to perform his office. And he had to observe the time by seeing where he was. And again, he says that the skies were open and I saw a vision of God. To be successful, the prophet, to be a successful prophet to the people, of Israel in Babylonia, the prophet Ezekiel had to sit by the river of Babylon and there the Lord would open up the heavens so that he can see the visions of God concerning the people's predicament, their condition, their surroundings, their atmosphere, and the hope that God afforded them in the time of their captivity. So what is the significance of time has to do with all of this is that we need to get along with God and allow him to show us the importance of the call in our life. You know, I've met many Christians, not a lot, a lot of Christians, but many Christians. If you ask them, what is God's will for your life? I don't know. Do you mean you don't have an idea of what God has caused, you know, called you to do? Not really. Folks, get along with God, sit with him by the river of your condition and watch God open the heavens and reveal to you the purpose and significance of your life in your time. The significance of our time with God is for him to reveal the call that he has given us. Many of us who conceive, listen, who conceive the idea that we can do something for God, but don't know the will of God, we will be lost. Now, we're saved by grace. We know that. And we're called to be part of the kingdom. We know that. But let me ask you a question. Can a Christian bring forth something? In other words, give birth, if I may put it that way, to something that is insignificant? Oh, yeah. Can a people be so blind that they miss the very purpose that Christ comes to them? 
Oh yeah, our Lord visits his people. The God who fulfills all time and space comes to his people in particular times and places to deliver them and redeem them. Hey, you want proof of that? Look at how important time and significance were together when Jesus was walking and he went past Zacchaeus who was on a tree waiting for the master to pass by. He heard about him and Jesus knew that Zacchaeus would be on that tree and he had to have perfect timing and perfect strategy to go to that tree and to speak to him and said, Zacchaeus, come down from that tree. I must stay in your house today. Wow. Zacchaeus went down. I think he jumped on. He was a little man, but I think he jumped down from that tree. <laughs> he didn't care what the people say. He was a tax collector. And he took Jesus into his house and he brought salvation to his house and salvation at the proper time. But there was a time when Jesus wept over Jerusalem. The Bible tells us in Luke 19, 41 through 44, he came closer to the city and when he saw it, he wept over it, saying, if you only knew today what is needed for peace, but now you cannot see it. The time will come when your enemies will surround you and barricades and block you and close you in on every side. They will completely destroy you and the people within the walls. Watch this now. Not a single stone will be left in its place because you did not recognize the time when God came to save you. Another version says, because you missed the time of your visitation and the temple got destroyed. Right after that, Jesus goes into the temple and man, he turns tables over. Now, what about Joseph? The significance of his time. What happened to him? I mean, think about this. Again, think about it. He had to be sold into Egypt, become the chief of slaves, accused of rape, put in jail, so that God can show him the significance, the importance of of God's grace upon him. And then he had to become the interpreter of dreams, taken to the king's court and given the place of honor so that he might become the governor so that when Jacob and his children entered into Egypt, he gave them a beautiful place to dwell on. God delivered them after that to Mount Sinai when he took them out of Egypt. You see how God's perfect timing, that's what I love about the word of God, most of all folks, is that God's timing is so perfect and we are not. Moses, it took him 40 years to be in Egypt, to learn the significance of Egypt, but then God took him out of Egypt and placed him in Jethro's house for 40 years. He took care of sheep to show him the significance of shepherding, and he had an encounter with God on Mount Sinai. And then God sends him back to Egypt. Watch this now. To show Egypt that their significance is useless before the power of God. Where are you today? Are you sitting with God? Or are you sitting in a place that God says, get up from there? It's time to move. There was a war going on in time of Joshua. And they were losing the battle at one point. And Joshua and the elders went before the ark of God. They went before the presence of God. And they prayed. And they stood there to the evening. They were, they were praying, God, show us. Help us. And finally, God said, Joshua, what are you doing there? <laughs> Joshua, what are you doing there? Well, I'm praying. You know, we're losing the battle. He says, get up. <laughs> get up. And I will show you where the sin is. And God took him finally to the family that had sinned, which was Achan. He had 
stolen some of the devoted things that God said, do not take for yourself. And he hid them under his tent. He was sitting under insignificance. And he brought death to his family. He brought, um, he brought to the camp of God, the whole camp of God, trouble. Let me just say this. The whole, the whole family of God, Israel, was Achan because of Achan. What about you? What you're doing right now, is it going to bring people to ache, to hurt, to be in pain because you're not listening to the will of God? Get up from your place. Say, God, show me the significance of your will in my time. What is the significance of time? God's power, God's will, and your participation in the kingdom of God. God bless you. Have a wonderful spirit-filled day. And remember, next time someone asks you, what is the significance of time? Point them to Genesis. Point them to Jesus. And point them to the kingdom. Until we meet again, as my wife says, Shalom.